you abused him. When you feed someone to this extent, it's not spoiling them, it's abusing them. Just because they ask for more and you give it to them, doesn't mean you're spoiling them. Coach Gregan, have you ever wondered what it's like to be extremely overweight? Like three times, five times bigger than you should be. But what about when it happens to a kid? A child, someone innocent. They don't know any better. Well, today's story is on the fattest kid on the planet. But it's a happy story. He was the fattest. He's no longer the fattest. He's actually made changes. He's improved. Wait till you see this guy's story and wait till you see how he's done. It is fantastic and I'm so happy to be able to share with you his transformation. I've been aware of this kid for many years. Saw the pictures and was shocked. Was like... How could a parent let this happen to their child? We're gonna pick up the story when he was at the age of 10, weighing over 420 pounds. 400 plus pounds as a 10 year old. It's six times more than the average child. So let's see. So I'm watching Truly's channel and the video's called World's Heaviest Kid Loses 220 Pounds. Let's see what it's all about. Berat Arya sekarang berapa? 192. Terus sekarang Arya pengennya gimana? Imagine what it's like as a 10 year old to not even be able to walk more than five meters. Can't go to school. How can he go to school? He can't walk there. Too heavy for life. He can't play with his friends. He can't play with his kids. He can't walk around. He's essentially bedridden from eating too much. Back in 2016, Aria weighed 192 kilograms, six times over the weight of an average 10 year old. So as you can imagine, he's too heavy to do most things. He's bathing outside, probably wouldn't fit in a tub and finds it excessively difficult just to get up on his feet. Imagine a 10 year old lifting 400 pounds up in the air. He has to do that just to walk. So imagine right now you're six times heavier than you are. I would be over 1,100 pounds. That would be what it's like to be this kid. Imagine how hard this is. He was eating five meals a day with two large plates per meal. And you might be wondering, how did he get to this point? Is it genetics? Is it bad eating? It's both, of course it's both. Nobody gets to this side without having Horrible genetics, horrible. Most kids, they can eat as much as they want, whenever they want, they would never get this big, but his genetics allowed him to do so. But it also was the fault of the parents who kept feeding him five large meals a day, two massive plates, five times a day. That's 10 plates of food a day. That's more than any child should ever eat. It's more than any adult. It's more than any pro bodybuilder should eat. The kids eating the kind of foods that the world's strongest man would be eating, trying to bulk up for a strongman competition. Kan awalnya Arya dari umur lima tahun ya, mulai gede itu ya dikatakan kasih sayang yang salah. You abused him. When you feed someone to this extent, it's not spoiling them, it's abusing them. Just because they ask for more and you give it to them, doesn't mean you're spoiling them. You're literally ruining their life. To all the parents out there watching this, you might not have a 400 plus pound kid, but what if they're 200 pounds at age 10? Is that acceptable? Is it the kid's fault that you're feeding them? Oh, mom, can I have some more chips? Hey, dad, can you take me to Dairy Queen McDonald's again? I love it. Sure, son, daughter, circle. I want to give you what you want. I want to spoil you. I love you so much. I want to give you everything your heart desires. Well, I want three Big Macs, a three large fry, a pickled pizza, a two liter ice cream. Uh, uh, oh, and while you're at it, a pack of cigarettes and, and some vodka. Okay, I'll give it to you because I want to spoil you. I love you. Anyone that would say yes to that, shouldn't be freaking parent lucky for this kid he was given gastric band surgery which allowed him to be more full than last time his genetics made it so that he was always hungry he was never full and satisfied so he kept wanting to eat more but with the surgery it allowed him to be more full finally he was satiated he likely didn't know about eating low calorie dense foods didn't know what to eat just ate he got his gastric band surgery and was finally able to eat in a deficit without starving. 
He lost weight and three years later, he is down over 220 pounds. He only weighs 190 now. He can go to school, he can play with his friends, and he can have a normal life. He got the GD. The GD came out of the bottle. He got his greatest wish to be thin. He's 190 pounds. He weighs the same as Coach Greg, and he's having fun and has a new lease on life. No longer bedridden, stuck on the floor. He can go out and play badminton. He wants to be a footballer. So you might be wondering, well, how hard was the diet? Well, at first, he explained the first month it was hard. He was so used to eating what he was eating, and so he started to miss those foods. But after a while, he got used to it. He slowly made the changes, and these slow changes were changes he was able to make for the rest of his life. After all, what good would it be to lose 220 pounds if he were to gain those 220 pounds back after? wouldn't make sense. The only diet you should follow is the diet you can follow for the rest of your life. He's now eating a lot healthier, a lot less sugar and fat and calories and more voluminous foods that keep him full. Just like you would see in the circle diet, foods that taste amazing that keep you full. And just so you know, this surgery, it causes the stomach to get full a lot quicker. It essentially becomes smaller. So that signal you get to the brain when you're full, that happens a lot sooner because your stomach is a lot smaller. Before the surgery, they tried to diet, but he was unsuccessful. He would lose a couple of kilograms one month and gain them back the next month. He couldn't stick to the diet. The reason for this is because he loves to eat. We all love to eat. He was hungry. When you start cutting back on calories, you're going to be hungry. In order to not be hungry, you need to eat low calorie dense foods like in my circle diet. If you can do that, you won't be as hungry and you can lose weight. And you might be asking what happens when you lose that much weight? Well, Obviously, you're going to have a tremendous amount of loose skin. So he has a lot of loose skin. You might be thinking, well, I don't want that loose skin. Trust me, it's better to be alive and have some loose skin than, well, the alternative. And no, I'm not saying it's easy to have a lot of loose skin, but the kid couldn't go to school. He's now playing sports. So just because he has some loose skin doesn't mean it's compromising his way of life. He gets to at least now have a life. Araya is now happy. Do you realize just how amazing that is? To be on this planet, to be alive and be happy is the best thing that can ever happen. It to me is the only thing that matters. You're alive and you're happy. What more can you ask for? This is what you want to see. So I caution you, if you're a parent and your kids are obese, morbidly obese, do something about it. Stop thinking you're spoiling your kids. You're literally punishing them when you're overfeeding them. You're not spoiling them. You're doing them a disservice. And to me, it borders on being an abusive parent. So think about that before you give your kid the next huge jumbo-sized meal when they're already obese. So truly, again, we're watching world's heaviest kid has saggy skin surgery. He literally has so much skin to be removed that it has to be done in five separate surgeries. He has to undergo surgery five times. They couldn't do it all at once. It's just too much. Antara waktu operasi itu sekitar tiga sampai enam bulan. Ini akan selesai berapa lama tuh? Ya dua tiga tahun lah mungkin. And as happy as I am for him that he lost weight, I can't help but think, isn't it a shame that he wasn't told to not eat so much when he was a child? I mean, did they really need to wait to the age of ten to figure it out to do something about it? If you never put sunscreen on your child and you allow them to sunburn every day, they get skin cancer, you don't take them to the doctor. Is that not child abuse? How is this any different? You're putting your child's life in danger by allowing them to become this overweight. It's not fair to them. Think about it. And again, he's happy. They've taken out the skin under the arms. He's happy. What more can you ask for? And from Story Trender, the video is called, I used to be the fattest boy in the world. Isn't it great? He's no longer the fattest boy, but he shouldn't have been the fattest boy in the first place. So parents, please don't overfeed your children. And it's heartbreaking. He can barely get himself up off the floor. 
It's not like he was born with this. It was caused from overeating. Food did this to him. Too much food. Not putting the fork down. And because of his age, that's not his fault. He's a kid. The parents had to put the fork down for him. Bisa cepat kayak tiga tahun gitu. Cuman kayak yang lainnya kan kalau diet itu niatnya kayak maksa. And he's saying it's not a forced diet. This diet is slow. Try not to lose weight too quickly. If you lose it slowly, the body can handle that. It doesn't feel like it's starving. And if the body's not starving, it can slowly lose weight. So when trying to lose weight, remember, it's a marathon, not a sprint. All too often, people want to lose weight now. They don't lose five pounds in the first week. They think they haven't done good. The problem is we're rushing things. Take your time losing weight. It might take you several months or several years, but as long as you're slowly getting there, you're going to get there. The first month was the hardest. When you start a new diet, it's going to be the hardest. You have to change your ways. You can no longer just eat every single thing you want. You have to get used to that. I think one of the reasons this really bothers me because I was a school teacher. I taught elementary school for many, many years and I often saw kids who were morbidly obese. Oftentimes I'd go to the grocery store and run into students with their parents. I'd look in the grocery cart and all I saw was junk food. Chips and ice cream, you name it, it was junk food. And then I'd see them at school and it would be lunch hour and what would they have? A 454 gram bag of chips. That was their lunch, bag of chips. And I talked to the kids like, do your parents have any other food? And that's what they gave them. They didn't care. Didn't care. I was trying to encourage them to eat apples and fruits. Parents give them pop and chips. What are you supposed to do? So I try to practice what I preach, walk around the school eating healthy, eating lots of fruit and vegetables and congratulating the students who are eating healthy. And those who weren't, I was suggesting, hey, wouldn't you want an apple? Maybe you can have one of my apple. What do you want to eat? But it's hard when you have parents who think they're right and that you're wrong and think that it doesn't matter and kids should be able to eat what they want. They're just kids. They should be able to have cake and ice cream all the time. They're kids. That's what I ate when I was a kid. Look how I turned out. Yeah, you turned out to be 300 pounds overweight. How is it healthy? So I did my best, but it's not enough. But hopefully on this channel where more than just 100 kids can see me, Maybe a million can see it. More people watching it, we can make more difference. We can make the world a healthier place. We can change the diets, make people discover how to eat a healthy diet, lose weight, and keep it off. How to find an activity that you enjoy that you will take part in for the rest of your life. We can make the world a healthier and better place to live where people can be happy. Education is paramount. The parents probably didn't even know what foods to give their kid. They just said, let's just spoil him. Let's give him whatever he wants. Maybe if they had been educated, maybe if the parents had Coach Greg as their teacher when they were growing up, they would have been able to teach their kids how to eat healthy. When you help one person, that one person can help others. And those others can continue to help others. It can snowball. It's like dominoes. You help one and you help more and sooner or later you help the world. That is the goal. We want the world to be a better place to live in, a healthier place for everyone. So they asked the kid, what diet advice can you get? Because after all, the kids lost over 200 pounds. As, as a 10-year-old, he lost all this weight and kept it off. So what did he say? He said, this is how I did it slowly lose the weight. Don't try to do it all at once. Lose the weight slowly. Cut back a little bit from week to week. Don't go from eating whatever you're eating now to a starvation crash diet right away. Your body can't handle that. And then if you do that, last a week, you go off the diet, you gain all the weight back. Not going to work. Stick to a diet that you can do for the rest of your life. Ending it here. GregDuset.com for coaching. Greg Duset IFB Pro. Spread the world. Let's help everyone lose weight and be happy. Bloop it up two videos. Let's help the world lose weight and be happy. And until next time, buy my freaking cookbook. And I'm out.